everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Lara Trump Wanted for Questioning. I'm sure there are a lot of Democrats out there that got very excited about that name. Turns out there are some people out there who have some questions for me, about me, friends, not friends. I'm taking them all. So that's what we're doing here today. Welcome to episode one. Oh, here we go. First question. How tall is your husband? Six, six question mark. Eric Trump is six, five. And I know this because I am five eleven. I like that the first question, by the way, was about my husband technically, but that's fine. I'm five eleven. When I put on heels, I need to be just slightly shorter than my husband. And uh, generally speaking, that works out. In fact, the first time we met, that was the first thing that caught my eye was that I was wearing heels and he was like the one person in the entire room who was taller than I am. So worked out. Um, I got to say sorry ahead of time to my daughter, Carolina, who will probably be like six feet plus tall. So sorry, babe. Not good. Okay, next question. What do you like to drink? Uh, I'm ashamed to say that I drink a lot of coffee and a lot of sparkling water, which I understand both are really bad for acid reflux. So I'm really hopeful for my future. Um, and my real secret with coffee is that my favorite coffee, I know this is gonna be like sacrilege to some people, is instant coffee. It's Cafe Bustello. It's instant espresso coffee. I'm sure a lot of people are going to get very upset by that. Now, I do love a good like high end coffee shop coffee. Don't get me wrong. But uh, in the mornings when I'm getting two kids ready for school and feeding three dogs and it's total chaos, Cafe Bustello is what I drink. Question three. Let's see. How much did running for president come up the year before he came down the escalator. I assume by he, you're talking about the 45th president, my father-in-law. Um, it actually didn't come up that much in my presence. The first time I really heard anything about it, I think there were rumblings maybe within the media and I caught a little bit of it here or there several months before the announcement and then we all got dinner as a family on my father-in-law's birthday, which is Flag Day, June 14th, very apropos, as you can imagine. And that's when he sort of told all of us, I think it was several days actually before his birthday, we got dinner, that he really was serious about it. We talked about it as a family. And next thing you know, Donald Trump comes down the golden escalator. How do you have time to do it all? Wife, mother, political commentator, kind, gorgeous. Oh, and great legs. You win the world. Wow. Well, thank you. Um, I, you know, my legs are very muscular because I work out a lot and do a lot of uh, crazy things like triathlons and CrossFit. Um, I don't know how I have time to do all the things that I do, although I feel like I probably should sleep a lot more. Um, but thank you for noticing. I feel like shout out to all the moms out there because I, I see you. I see you up early. I see you when I'm on the Peloton sometimes at like 5 a.m. And I see that it's got like hashtag moms of Peloton. Shout out to you guys because you're making it happen. We got to get up and do this stuff before these kids are awake because just everything goes downhill after that. Question five. Worst injury growing up. Hmm. Well, I've ridden horses my whole life. And when I was in, I think, fifth grade, I dislocated my elbow riding my friend's horse. And um, I had to have my, my arm in a cast that, if you could see, was sort of like 90 degrees. Apparently, that's the protocol when you dislocate your elbow. They had to reset my, my elbow, by the way with no anesthesia or anything because I was apparently too young to get it. So the guy just kind of like pulled it out of socket and put it back in. Anyone who's had that done, it's quite a time. Um, but then after I got my arm out of the cast, I couldn't, it took forever for me to fully be able to extend my arm. And um, it's still to this day, doesn't fully extend the right way. That one hyper extends, this one does not. Anyway, that was probably the worst injury 
growing up that I recall. Although there were many times that I came home with like, you know, busted up knee or something. I was always playing with all the, I was the only girl in the neighborhood. So you figure it out. I was hanging out with the guys. So a lot of, a lot of injuries. All right. You didn't run for Senator last year in North Carolina. Will you ever run? What about Eric? I would never say never to anything. Um, I think that I would wait until my kids were a little bit older. Um, they're three and five, and I feel like you don't get this time back. They need their mom there as often as possible, doing as much as I can with them, and I fully intend to be there for them and, and raise my kids. Uh, so I would never say never. I think we got to see what the future brings. I think let's focus on 2024 right now and getting the current occupant of the White House out and making sure we have someone in the White House who can get this country back on track. And obviously, I want that to be my father-in-law, President Donald Trump. As for Eric, gosh, po politics are tough. Nobody tells you when you get into this uh, mess as a family that they'll come after all of you for basically no reason other than politics. And um, I, I would say he's probably at this point the least likely in our family to run for political office. But check back. You never know what could happen. Uh, the truth is we both love this country. We want great things to happen in this country. And we want to see people successful and our country strong and all the right things happen. So never say never to anything. Next question. Personal best race time. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think. I had a really good... 10K, that's 6.2 miles for people out there who are like, I hate running. I've never done that before. In my last triathlon, and I have to look it up. I feel like it was like a 46 or 47 minute 10K, which at the end of almost a mile swim and a 20 some mile bike, 26 mile bike or so, I'm gonna take that. That's not bad. Now, you know, you get good days and you get bad days. D don't check out the, the times on my next one. Now that I've said that, they'll probably be really terrible. So I'll have to look all them up myself actually and remember. Okay, next question. Favorite food? <sighs> this is such a hard one. It's kind of weird. All right, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say three. Sweet potatoes, I know, so unoriginal peanut butter and sushi. So, I mean, not all together at the same time, but I have been known to have a little sushi, a little sweet potato, and then some sort of a peanut butter sweet at the end. So not all simultaneously, but I do love them all. And um, fun fact, if you go to France, I lived in France for a while, et je parle français aussi, there is peanut butter, nowhere to be found in France. And I was desperate to get peanut butter when I lived in France on Deux Mille Cinq, 2005. Um, maybe they got it together over there. Maybe they've discovered peanut butter. But when I lived there, there is there was no peanut butter to be found in Lille, France, in the Northwest of France uh, to save my life. So that was a sad time for me. Okay. Will you be a future first lady? Oh, well, you'll have to talk to my husband about that. Uh, maybe he'll be a first gentleman. What do you think about that? No, I'm just kidding. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Someone will report on that, that I am now in the running for president. I am not. Um, I don't know. There, You know, crazier things have happened. Let's just focus on 2024, and then we'll see down the line how things pan out. I don't know that there are any plans for Eric to run for president, but you never know. Last question. You've lived in North Carolina, New York, and now Florida, maybe other places. What's your favorite? It's hard to beat where I grew up in North Carolina. I absolutely love Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Wilmington is the bigger kind of city there. And I think I'm very nostalgic about it because I feel like I had such a great childhood and such a great upbringing. And I felt so lucky to have grown up where I did at the time I did and with the family that I still have. I'm so lucky to have my parents and my brother and they all live together there, by the way. I'm the only one that isn't there. Um, I love living in Florida though, because I got to tell you, when I see my friends posting who still live in New York and Connecticut and it's like 10 degrees outside, 
I mean, we've got on a light jacket because it's like 75 and we're a little chilled down here in Florida. Um, so I do love living in Florida and I miss the old New York. It's not the same right now because I'm not trying to get pushed in front of a subway train and there is such a disgusting situation on the streets in New York in many respects. It just feels unsafe and unsanitary and kind of gross right now. But the New York, when I moved there 15 years ago or so, that was a fun time. But now I'm raising kids. I want them somewhere safe. I want them somewhere clean. And being able to go outside year round doesn't hurt either. So um, love living in Florida, but I do think that no place beats home and home will always be North Carolina for me. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for the first episode of Laura Trump Wanted for Questioning. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I, I don't know what to say. We want to do more. If you have any questions for me, whether they're good or bad, I'll probably read them all anyway. So you can leave them in the comments and we'll do our next installment of this show coming up soon. So let us know what you think, or you can go to the right view on Instagram at the right view um, and leave us some questions there as well. Um, we'll see you back here next time for more of Lara Trump wanted for questioning.